Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to support multiple languages in a Blazor WebAssembly application. Of course, that means we have to provide multiple versions of all of the strings in our app. It's actually not that hard, but it could be a little time consuming. Now, not only will our app detect the user's culture and use the appropriate language, but we will give them the ability to switch languages with a drop-down list, a feature that many websites today employ. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. What? Blazor Train! All right, so I'm starting with a hosted Blazor WebAssembly application called a Localization Demo. And it is hosted, but it doesn't need to be hosted. You can make this work with a standalone WebAssembly application just as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a package reference to Microsoft Extensions Localization. Now you can do this however you want to add your package. It's just easier for me to do it here. Now we're going to need a place to put the resources that will contain the strings in different languages. So I'm going to create a resources folder. And to that we're going to add a single resource file. And it's called app.en-us.resx. Now, here's the deal. App refers to app.razor. App.razor is sort of global. So I can add all my strings to this resource file and use them in every component in my application. Another alternative would be to create a pages folder and a shared folder underneath the resources folder. And then you could add index.en-us-resx, counter.en-us.resx, etc. So you could have individual resource files for each page. But I found that it was much easier just to do this. So this is what you see, a name value pair editor, and you can just start putting in values. Now I have the values listed in the repo, and you can add them manually like so, but that might take a long time. So instead, what I'm going to do is right click on this file and select open with, and then XML text editor. And that gives me access to the XML file, which I can paste in from the repo. And so it has all of these strings in it that we're going to need. Now, if I save that and double click on this guy again, you're going to see all of the strings. Much easier to do that way. Okay, next we're going to create one for Spanish. And that will be app dot es dash mx dot resx. All right, so this will be the Mexican flavor or dialect of Spanish. Once more, we're going to open with the text editor and paste from the repo and save. Just to check, yep, everything's there. Now we have a little more plumbing to do. So let's go to the program CS file. And right here on line six, we're going to add the following. Builder.services.add localization with options, setting the resources path to our resources folder. Now we need to go back to the CS proj file. And right here, we're going to say, Blazor WebAssembly load all globalization data and set it to true. You got to do that if you're going to do localization. Now let's open up our imports razor and add a couple of using statements. Localization demo shared. We're going to take that out of fetch data so we can access weather forecast. And most importantly, using Microsoft extensions.localization. Now a common issue that comes up when doing localization is that you have to pull out values from the service for the resources with a string key, right? you have these keys. Application name, for example. And it might be easy for your developers to mistype something or not capitalize something correctly. So to avoid typos, we're going to add an enumeration with all of these names. 
So to the project, we're going to add a class called resource strings. Now, what if you get a typo when adding these things? All right, you know what? I'm going to give you a little tip. Go back to this view on either language and select all of the names. Press Control C to copy them into the clipboard. Now go back to our enumeration and paste them. Now all you got to do is add the commas. Set that last one. Last one doesn't need a comma. Okay, now we can replace our UI pages to support the localization. So let's start with the counter. So we're injecting iString localizer of app because app is the component that has the resources attached to it. And we're calling it LOC. And so now what I'm doing is I'm pulling out from this dictionary, but instead of using say counter title, which would work just fine, I'm using name of resource strings dot counter title, right? So now essentially you're just selecting the right resource string. All right, let's do fetch data. Same deal. I string localizer of app. All right, an index straight ahead, right? All right, now let's go into our shared components, main layout. Nav menu and survey prompt. Now I'm going to run this. Now, while it might look like the regular template, rest assured, all of these strings are coming out of the resource files. So how do we change our language to Spanish? Well, I'm running Chrome. So I'm going to go to settings, languages, and you can see here the Add Languages button. I'm going to search for Spanish and scroll down to Spanish Mexico and add. Now to make this our default language, I'm going to click on this ellipsis and select Move to the top. Now all I have to do is reload because those resources are loaded when the app runs the first time. And there we go. You notice even this string has changed. Switch it back. Now when you switch it back, I have to make sure that my language is English United States, not English, because they're different. Move to the top. Reload. There we go. Now wouldn't it be cool if I could just drop down a list of languages like most web apps have? And then the language updates dynamically. I like that idea. Let's do that. So the first thing we'll do is add a class to the client called culture with name. And this is going to be a record. So it's going to associate a name like English US or English with a culture, which is the culture string en-us. Next, we're going to add a class called localizer settings. And this is a static class. And it will expose a culture with a name called neutral culture, and then a list of supported cultures, English and Spanish Mexico. Now we're going to need a way to store and retrieve the selected culture. So let's use local storage. And for that, I'm going to turn to my friend Chris Sainty's excellent library, Blazard Local Storage. Got to go to imports and add the using statement. And we also have to add it as a service and program. Next, we're going to add a shared component, which will include a drop-down list for us to select the language and culture. And that's going to be called Culture Selector. So let's go through this. This is going to show up in the top next to the About link. So I want to span. So here we have the word language in whatever language the culture is in. And now I've got a select. And on change, I'm calling new culture selected async. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm looping through each culture in the supported cultures with name. And if it's the selected culture, I'm going to set the selected attribute on the option. Otherwise, I'm not. In each case, the value will be the culture string. And I will display the name. So here I have my selected culture. And in on initialized async, I am calling local storage 
to get that culture that I've set, if I've set it. If I haven't set it, I'm going to set the selected culture to the neutral culture. If I have set it, then I'm going to set the selected culture to the culture in supported cultures with name where that culture string matches. And then when I select one, I'm going to pull out the value into this string, culture string. I'm going to write it to local storage. And then I'm going to navigate to the same page that I'm on, but with this true, which is a Boolean that indicates you want to force a reload. Now to display this component, we're going to go to main layout. And right here above our about link, we'll just instantiate a culture selector. Now, how are we going to load up the current culture? We're reloading, but that means we have to do something in program here to get the current culture from local storage and set it as the current culture. So for that, I'm going to create an extensions class that extends what gets returned from build, which is a WebAssembly host. So let's add a class called WebAssembly Host Extensions. So I'm extending a WebAssembly host and adding a static async task method called set default culture. Okay, so it doesn't really take any parameters. It just pulls out the culture from local storage and sets that to our default culture. So I'm calling host services get required service, and this is the service that I want to get, iLocal Storage Service, and that was added here. And then we're pulling out the culture string from local storage. And now I need a culture info. And this is a system.globalization.culture info. This is what the system uses. This isn't anything that I've created. And so if that string comes back from culture, from local storage, I'm going to create that new culture info with the culture string. Otherwise, I'm going to create the culture info with my localizer settings neutral culture name, which in this case is English US. And now here's the magic, folks. On the default thread, I'm setting the current culture and the current UI culture to this culture info. And that's what does it. Now, how do we call this in program? We're going to replace this one line with three lines of code. So first we get the host from builder.build. .build. That's our WebAssembly host. Then we call set default culture and then we run. Setting the default culture has to be done after we've built the host and before we run it. Now let's see what happens. So everything works the same as it did before, except now I can drop down this language and change it to Spanish. There you go. Here's our home page, here's our counter page, and here's our fetch data page. And that is the end of my demo. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, I grew up on Star Trek, and the idea of a universal translator always appealed to me. That has nothing to do with Blazer, but I just wanted to get in a plug for Star Trek. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!